I'd rather take those $40 million and put the 10 people back in employment at the Lesbian and Gay Center who, were, who had their jobs cut this past week because the funding of the clearinghouse was removed because of this California state government. I want to put those people back into business. I want to, I want to reach out to African Americans who we, we plagiarized, we, we demonized during Proposition 8. And I want to say to our African American communities that you know, if this is really about white power and white money, I want to say to forgive me for doing that. And I'm going to ask you to forgive me, not just because I say it, because I want to put my money there. And I want to tell our African Americans who, uh, you know, who sometimes are the, you know, you know what I'm trying to say this morning. You know, I want to put my money back there and say, I really care about you. I don't just care about you so that your vote goes to me in 2010 or 2012 or 2014. I care about you because I know that your health is at risk. The highest risks of HIV infection in our community right now is around African Americans and Latinos. And sisters and brothers, we need to be putting our money where our mouth is and asking those communities who we demonized to forgive us. And to say, no more, we, we really need to be a community. I want to put my money to transgender issues, of the transgender resource services, which are being cut left, right, and center. I want to put my money to women's services, uh, to reproduction services, to women's right to choose what goes on in their own bodies. <laughs> can, can, you, can you imagine what we could do with $40 million? Because I promise you, it will probably cost that much to get it back on the ballot. It won't cost us 40 million to get it on the ballot. It will probably cost us 200,000. But I tell you, as soon as it gets back on the ballot, we're going to have to match dollar for dollar what, what other people will put in to defeat us. And sisters and brothers, I don't think that's right in this economic time. I think at this economic time, we should be caring for our people. The commissioner of a hospital down in South Central was at the rally, um, it really affected me, I want to tell you, it was at the rally we had downtown. And she was talking to me, I had a clerical collar on, so I think she thought it was safe to come and talk to me. And she said to me, she said, you know, I'm really concerned. And I asked her to tell me her concern. She said, my real concern is, is for the patients that I get to see. She said, we're no longer given any funding for T-cell testing. She said, and we can't prescribe medication unless we have a T-cell count. So now we, 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 can't, we don't have the funds to get a T-cell count and we can't medicate, give life-saving drugs to folks who don't have a T-cell count. She said, I have to make that decision in my hospital tomorrow about whether this person is going to get life-saving drugs or whether this person's not. She said, my hands are tied. I want to tell you, I don't want to go back to the days when week in and week out, metropolitan community churches were holding memorial service for people living with HIV and AIDS in their bodies. I don't want to go back to that time. We had a great celebrative time in our congregation when we were marrying couples left, right, and center in those few months, but I don't want to go back to the time where I'm burying my sisters and brothers because funds have been cut from the California state budget. I don't want to go back to a time where people uh, have to zero convert, become HIV positive because the only services that are provided socially in our community are for people who are HIV positive. And so homeless people and young people are infecting themselves with HIV because that's the only place they can get housing and services. We should be providing services across the board for all peoples who are struggling with health. Perhaps the greatest service that's been offered to us around some of the defeats that we've re recently received is that we've been called back together as community. No longer to see gimme, 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 but re re really realistically saying, how can I reach out to my sisters and my brothers? How can I make a difference in my piece of the world? How can I ensure that this congregation is cared for right at this time? How can we make sure that we get through this together? And I want to tell you, I don't think spending 40 million in 2010 is the right thing to be doing, but I speak only for myself. I make that very clear. 
forgive us our sins. There are major sins going on in this world right now. Major things happening in this world right now that we are being called not only to forgive, but to do something about them. And I want to encourage this congregation as we stand on the promises of this prayer this morning, as we stand on the promise of this prayer of Jesus, that yeah, we, we, we must forgive what has happened to us so that we will no longer be the victims of what has happened to us, but that so we can be the overcomers of the things that have happened to us and the world will see that we are stronger and better and more courageous because we have decided that we're gonna be a community and not just a white community, but an African-American community, a Latino community, a red community, a yellow community, and even someone from Great Britain gets to stand in the middle of all of that and make a difference. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Together we will get through this. We'll get through it. We'll get through it because we've been here before. But we'll get through it stronger because we're here together. We're here as the body of Christ. I look forward to my conversation with the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints because I want to find ways in which we can work together. Work together to look at homelessness, to look at poverty, to look at how people should access drug and uh, drug care. To, to look at how people who are HIV positive can have the very best care, and not just here in California, but around the world. To find ways in which we can convince our drug companies to really find out the cost of HIV medication and not escalate it by thousands and thousands to line the pockets of doctors and, and people who are in power and authority. Huh. You didn't expect that this morning. <laughs> Forgive us our debts as in the same way we're prepared to forgive the debts of others so that we can together create heaven here on earth. God bless you this morning. Let's keep moving forward. and Let's keep being the people of God that we've been called to be. God bless you. Would you pray with me? God, I'd, I don't know. Sometimes it just feels like you've given me something to say. And sometimes it feels as though that, 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 that which you have to give me to say is not easy to say, but I say it anyway. I want to pray for my sisters and brothers, that even if what I've said this morning has raised real concerns for some. And I want to thank you if it has. I want to thank you, God, because in this church you don't have to agree with the pastor to come here. In this church we hold diversity in this church, we hold in tension the love that we have for one another, even when we don't agree with one another sometimes. In many churches, you have to leave if you don't agree with the pastor. In many churches, you have to leave if you don't feel included. Well, in this church, that's not the case. We celebrate one another and our own opinions, and we're thankful for it. But God, I do believe that you gave me this message this morning to speak. But I think it was a message that was first directed at me. And if it's meant something to someone else, well, thank you. So help us, God, to take what we need to from this morning, to challenge us, perhaps inspire us, perhaps even make us a little argumentative so that all of those things can be put into the pot so that ultimately out of that we find truth and we find the best way forward. So God, may the words that have come from my mouth not return to you without making a difference. And may that difference lead us in the ways of Jesus. Amen.